So there's no place like home for the holidays, and it's the time for charitable giving. I brought in a special guest, um, actually guests, I should say, because I have three, three of them, two in the studio and one on the phone, and they're all from the special organization, and I'm sure not many of you have heard of it, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring them on the show today. It's the Prune Belly Syndrome Network, and I have the past b- board member, Frank Walker, and he was also the va- past VP as well, and I have the current vice president, Ta- um, I'm sorry, Deborah Apgar, and I have Frank's girlfriend with us, Tammy Pendergast. So, Frank and everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. And uh, like I said, I'm sure nobody knows what prune belly syndrome is. So maybe you and Tammy can tell us a little bit about the um, the, the defect that it actually is at birth. Sure. It's uh, In most cases, it's a medical condition with a partial or complete lack of abdominal muscles at birth. Uh, I was born with it, and in my case, it was a complete lack of muscles. It leads to many other complications relating to kidney, lung, and heart, and other things. The general statistics of it are 1 in 40,000 live births, and 50% will not survive their second birthday. Wow. So, uh, Tammy, you're, you're an outsider to this because you met Frank, Frank um, several years ago. And you found out that he, he has prune belly syndrome, and I'm sure you Googled it because I'm sure most people that are listening are going to say, what is that? I never heard of it. And it actually, it has a medical name too. What's it called? It's called Eagle Barrett Syndrome. Okay. And um, like Frank actually has it. And I know Frank from high school. <laughs> we actually sang together in yes. chorus. And, and Frank's been singing throughout the years. And he does actually a lot of charity events for this organization um, to help get people to be aware of prune belly syndrome and to actually uh, raise money and get donations so that people can have the opportunity to go to their conventions and um, they have a whole bunch of other things that you could donate for too and Debbie's going to help us out a little bit with the donations a little bit later on during the show so how was your life, Frank, um, growing up and actually being born with this prune belly syndrome? Well, um, I was in hospitals a lot um, as a child, more than I really even know about, to tell you the truth, uh, with many different issues relating to it. I was not expected, I was not expected to survive, survive the first year, and uh, I was very physically limited as a kid and had to be very careful so as not to get hurt due to no protective muscles. Right. So you were not allowed to play in gym in school. No. Nope. And um, I, I know you told me this, but you did, you did actually carry your books in front of you Usually, to yes. kind of protect your body right. as you're going down the hallway right. because you have no muscles in your stomach exactly. area. And at that time, yes. I used to wear a Velcro binder around my waist to try to keep things tight and protected whenever possible. And I would usually put my books in front of, my, in front of me when I walked through the hallways in school. And then you started singing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So how did you get into singing? Well, I, being that I couldn't play sports or do a lot of stuff that was physically limiting, um, I really got into music uh, as a young kid and uh, started to, um, oh, there's a, there was a church by me that allowed, had a church folk group. So I used to go watch them to play and all, and I used to try to get into the folk group. And they finally did allow me to come in and start as a singer, then a tambourine player, then a guitar player. And I was there for about 10 years because they let me be part of it. And, and that kind of gave you a life yes in exactly. a sense because I'm sure as a child um, and I wasn't there during elementary school but I'm, <laughs> I, I thought you were cool because you were a great singer <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't I didn't um, notice anything other than that you were a great singer oh, and that you. you could play every instrument <laughs> but um, some of the kids they bullied you, bullied you and stuff during school some did yeah yeah, uh, there was. Uh, I mean, the, the most, the one I remember the most was in junior high, uh, in between classes, walking in a hallway, a crowded hallway, and I was talking to a friend of mine, looking to my right at him, and out of nowhere in front of me, I feel a blow to my stomach. Somebody just decided I they, I was a target, hit my hit my stomach. I went down, and couldn't breathe, and went to the doctor, and they they found that the the bruise was just a little left of center to my stomach. 
And they said, Frank, if it was centered, it would have killed you. Wow. So just a couple of inches would have made a big difference. Wow. And me, and you didn't know anybody else that actually had this disease growing up. And no. back then, we didn't even have computers. Right. Not that I want to say that we're that old, but <laughs> exactly. there were no computers back then. Yeah. So you didn't even find out about anyone having this. Um, and none of the doctors that you went to ever had a patient with it right. until you came across this organization, the Prune Belly Syndrome Network. Exactly. org. Right. And that was how many years ago? I found the website, I believe it was like 96. So, and my, my operation, and I had an operation that corrected my muscles, which was in 1982. So, there was a long span in between that. Wow. Before finding out anyone else who was going through this than I was. Wow. And just tell everyone a little bit about that operation. Yeah. The, um, I had a doctor named Ralph Gurr, a surgeon, who um, discovered that he was able to take muscles from your thighs. There's, there's four muscles in each thigh. He can take one from each thigh and flip them up into the stomach area, which for me served as a 95% correction to the missing muscles. I now have the muscles that I didn't have before that. Right. And it's, you know, think about it because everyone's so aware of their core now. Right. Um, you know, your abdom abdominal muscles, they're so important for everything you do and they hold your body up. Right. And, you know, I was asking Frank, I was like, well, yeah, but you always seem like you got up good, but you managed to compensate by using your arms to get yourself out of a chair. Exactly. And now you're actually able to get up the same as everyone else. Without any assistance. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So it's, it's, it's pretty incredible. Um, and it's amazing that there's, even though you said there's 40,000, but... There's not that many, or there's not really that many diagnosed cases. In no, I think Debbie could probably answer that better than I can, but I think, um, if I remember right, there was like 1,500 that we, were, that we were aware of. I could be wrong that's about that correct. number. Is that right, Debbie? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, 1,500 cases that we're aware of in the, in the country or the world? Well, it's not cases that we're aware of. We're aware of 1,500 survivors. Okay. And, and a lot of cases is undetermined because so many of the births are terminated. That's usually the first course of treatment that a doctor will suggest is that oh. they terminate their pregnancy. Yeah. Oh, I didn't I didn't even know that part. I was just I was also going to mention um, that only fifty percent survive past two you said two years two old. Two years old, right, exactly. Frank? Yep. And it's it's also sad because one of the little babies that was only five months old just recently passed away yes uh we just found out the other a uh, couple days ago uh december 7th uh five month old jet tully passed away from complications stemming from prune belly and other issues he was going through and uh it's tough because he was from long island i got to meet him i got to meet his family and it's 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 tough yeah that had to, to be heartbreaking that. for them yeah so people need to be aware that the prune belly it's not just that you're missing the muscles other things get affected your organs yes. also get affected and that's why it's i guess more a fatal disease can be yeah i mean it, it, it can affect kidneys it can affect lungs um intestines intestines right yeah various different things and deborah you your your child has the prune belly syndrome too correct yes he is uh, seven years old nicholas we actually adopted nicholas and uh, his adoption never would have came to fruition had it not been for the prune belly syndrome network because we had no information and everything we found on the internet essentially told us that he wouldn't survive and, mm. and we already had three children so taking a fourth child and chances that they would pass really was difficult to make a decision but after a meeting ann grail who was the president at the time and frank as well as marianne hall out in philadelphia i mean we had to reach out to people across the country in order to be able to speak to anyone about what was the possibility for him. And we found out very quickly that the doctors were going to be very wrong. <laughs> and our son actually had the same surgery as Frank did. Right. He had it, um, Frank, how, 30 years later, correct? Yes, right. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we're going to be Gary. right back. We have to go to a commercial break. But if you want to help, it's www.prunebelly.org. And you're listening to the special holiday house hunt with Laura Cusimano. And we were just playing Frank Walker's song, Not the Only One, with Jen Chapin. That's Harry Chapin's daughter. And 
uh, Frank wrote this song for the Prune Belly Syndrome Network organization, and all the proceeds go to the organization. And Frank, you're going to make me start crying <laughs> right now. I got myself already. <laughs> but I, I just, I do have to mention one other thing before we start really crying. Mm. Um, I, I did play that song today in lieu of doing, I usually do um, a, a little thing for LA Pulse Magazine. We, we were doing the holiday fun facts, but I thought it would be more important to do your song today to get the word out there. Thank you. So um, that was sponsored by LA Pulse Magazine, and you can pick up a copy today for all the latest things Long Island, including real estate and market trends. You, rec- you can request a free issue at www.lipulse.com. Long Island Pulse Magazine, it's defining life styles and culture so now we're back don't cry too much on me though (laughs) too late (laughs) so you you actually wrote that song when you found out about the organization and you found out you were not the only person out there with this exactly wow yeah i was um 35 before i met someone else with it wow so uh and that's one thing about the conventions that they have every year is that a lot of times actually this past one i believe it was almost all new people that came to the convention and met each other for the first time ever. Wow. And Tammy, you were at the convention too. You went to the past two years. Yes, I went to the past two years. And and tell us like from an outsider, seeing that experience of people, somebody that has this and never met anyone else uh, with it before, what was it like? Listening to the stories, it's, it's heartbreaking, you know, because they feel very isolated. And when they come together and they meet somebody who's going through the same things, because most of us go through, you know, our child with just colds and things like that. These kids are in the hospital. They're sick. They sometimes have to wear bags, things that we wouldn't normally have to do until we're much older or never in our lives, um, you know, going through surgeries. So for them to see somebody who has the same scars from the same surgeries, to see somebody who has the same condition, It's, you know, for them, it's priceless to have somebody that they can bond with that has been through it, that understands what they go through on a daily basis. And it also gives them the opportunity, the kids, to just be kids for, you know, a time being. Um, And the adults, when you hear the adults go through and they're, you know, in their 30s or 40s and they've never met another person who had it and they're meeting somebody who understands what they've gone through it's it's you know it's overwhelming to hear their stories yeah and i i just want to say it again if you can go to the website and check it out it's prunebelly syndrome network.org nope i'm saying it wrong yeah, Frank, prun- tell us it. It's prunebelly.org. Prune, oh, it's nice and short. There you go. <laughs> prunebelly.org. It's okay. And, um, you know, you may know somebody that actually has this. That's what That was why I wanted to have Frank on today to talk about this. Because, you know what, there's so many gigantic organizations out there and charities that people donate to. But not a lot of people know about the small ones. And uh, these people need help and need to... Uh, find other people with the same illness so that they can have a better life. And especially today, between your convention and you can have FaceTime or you could do Google Hangouts with each other or just email, you have a support system for each other to get through whatever hospitals and operations that you have that you're going to be going through in your life. Exactly. exactly And Laura, as myself, as a parent, the network's priceless because there are other people that understand the helplessness as a parent that you have as you watch your child go through this. But our son's been going to a convention since he was born, essentially, and and uh, Nicholas doesn't think himself any different than any other child that walks this earth. He thinks prune belly is just a normal part of life. And wow. I'm thankful that he doesn't have to feel different. And it's because of people like Frank that that's yeah. a part of who he is. Uh, well, boy. <laughs> well, Frank, you are a great guy. That's definitely true. Thank so, you. Debbie, can you tell us, uh, tell me and the listeners out there, how uh, how can we help? How can we help your organization? We operate completely on private donations. So right now, our biggest goals, of course, are our research. The research has changed prune belly as we know it, and uh, that's by because of Dr. Linda Baker out of Dallas, Texas. She's been traveling with us to our conventions, doing the genetic research, and then taking that information and taking it to the AUA, which is the American Neurological Association, and changing doctors' minds about what the possibilities are with prune belly 
And uh, she's also formulating a team that's helping us to get a standard of care because there is still no standard of care for Prune Valley. Wow. Money is the key to research. Dr. Baker was recently awarded a $1.25 million research grant to continue her research on Prune Valley. But in order to do that, we, on the private level, have to continue to raise funds to host these conventions and these family meetups to bring families together so that they contribute their genetic samples there. That's that's a large portion of our convention. It's not only to bring the families together, but also to complete the research while they're there. We bring Dr. Baker with us, make it as convenient as we can. She brings her entire research team in. They help with all the, the study paperwork and getting everything going. Wow. And uh, now there's sev- uh, there's several different ways on the website that somebody can donate. Can you just give us a little brief mm-hmm. synopsis of the different types of donations that you that you do? The, there's a drop down under donation and there is a button for research that would go directly to getting some of these family meetups done. There's a little wishes and convention scholarship drop down. Those are related directly to the family. Little wishes pays for some of the survivors and their siblings to go on different events, baseball games and museum outings while convention's going on. And then uh, the convention scholarship program helps to fund the room fees at convention for some of the families that are struggling with their medical bills and just need some assistance in order to be able to be at that event. Okay, and we, now they can get to you by going to prunebelly.org mm-hmm. or they can also call in their donation and you have uh, an 800 number. Can you tell it to us? That would be 855-ASKY-BSN. And you can call that 24 hours a day, not just to make a donation, but if you're a family that's discovered that we're out there for you, call us if you need help, if you want to connect and we're always available. Okay, that's great. And I'm going to post information on the House Hunt's uh, Facebook page and on the website. So we're we're almost out of time. So before we say goodbye, I just want to thank Frank, Tammy, and Debbie for joining me today. Please help the prunebelly.org. A small donation can help bring hope to these individuals and families that are coping with prune belly.